You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this State of the Show show. Um, it is, uh, what is it, the end of 2022. So where have we gone and where are we going, I guess, is what we're going to talk about today. Um, first of all, where we've gone, we've had a very good year. Uh, we hit a million downloads about mid-year. Um, let's see, what else? We had uh, a great get out of the car tour season. We started with, I believe, 83 people in April and ended with 105 in October. And uh, we basically had high 80s or low 90s uh, for all the other tours. So that was, uh, that was good. Except, wait, there was one tour that we knew. I don't know. There was one tour we had 76 on. But it, what was that? The Antietam one. Antietam one. Oh, September, yeah. Because people decided that Antietam's 160th was more important than their friends here at Addressing Gettysburg. And we don't, don't worry. We kept a list and we remember come Christmas time, you will all find out uh, who is on that list, of course. Anyway, uh, so uh, I'm sitting here with uh, two people that I want to introduce you to uh, because they've been very helpful this year. Uh, with theirs, and we'll get into what we, there's other stuff that we did over the year. But um, I've already acknowledged them off mic, and so now I feel like I should introduce them to you. And if you're watching the video, of course, you can see them sitting right here, uh, Bill and Cindy Etzcorn. You've heard me talk about them many times. And uh, Bill, they've been on AG Today before, but uh, now we'll figure we'll, uh, we'll let you sit down and listen to them coughing. <laughs> you got Cindy. Good job. Uh, right on cue. Uh, no, so uh, Bill and Cindy, the reason they're here is because they are the chair and co-chair, vice chair, whatever the hell you call it. Whatever she lets me be. Captain and lieutenant. No. No. Sorry. Uh, you're a major and a captain. Yeah. Yes. In our fake little army here. So. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so you guys, we, we do the, uh, event committee together and this is something that was also started or founded, uh, in 2022 after the April tour, if I'm not mistaken. Is that not correct? We were sitting well, that around. That was our first meeting. We actually were sitting around talking about it in January, like December, December. January last year. Like, is that right? Yeah. Cause you were talking about how you wanted to bring Patrick in yeah. for a live event. And I said, okay. Oh, that's when that was. Yeah. What can we do to help? What can we do? Well, to help? right. Okay. So that we was the that. seed of it. But it, with the idea of forming a after committee, that, it was after April's was tour. Yeah. We were sitting around the uh, fire at the Farnsworth house, and Tim Tim Smith had said, "Hey, have you seen Camp Farnsworth?" And I'm like, "No." And and he's like, "Well, come on, I'll show you." And so we went back and we saw uh, Camp Far- Camp Tiger. At the, he was calling it at the time, but now it's called Camp Farnsworth. And uh, looked at it, and I was like, oh, we got to do something back here. This is the coolest space. And so we went back to the campfire, and we're sitting there and um, talking. And I'm kind of thinking out loud, well, what do I do about drinks? What do I do about food? What do I do this, that, and the other thing? And hold on. <coughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting over oh, cold. We're all, we're all somehow. Yeah. <coughs> Awful. I've been sick since the end of September, and it's November now. Just when I was getting better from the first one, I caught another one. Anyway, uh, so, uh, yes, forgive us for coughing and forgive me for sounding all congested because I am. Anyway, uh, so I, I'm thinking out loud and Cindy leans in and she goes, hey, idiot, have you ever thought of forming a committee so that you don't have to do everything? And I said, uh, no, I haven't. And she's like, well, you should. And I said, OK, are you the first volunteer? And she goes, sure. And sure. then Bill said, I'm the second volunteer. And I was like, great, find three more. Let's find three more people and we'll have a committee. And so we did. And um, very easily, by the way. And so we've got a committee of actually it's like six now, isn't it? It's a total of six. It's you two. Uh, Steve. Steve. Uh, Ty. Beth. Uh, Maria. Beth Ty. And Maria and Ty. Yeah. So that's six. That is six. Yeah. And um, it uh, it has uh, it has been very helpful to me to have you guys uh, doing that, and so let's talk a little bit about what you've done over the last year and what we're going to get into next year because next year is going to be fun. Twenty twenty three, the one hundred and sixtieth anniversary of the battle. Uh, so okay, so we immediately got to planning a show at. Uh, Camp Tiger, and uh, that was going to be for August, and so we started putting that together, and we pulled it off in August. Yeah, we somehow did. we we did it right, and it went off pretty well. It did go well. Um, and we we did a survey after the survey, and and the negative comments were, 
not Sim- really yeah, negative. Yeah. They were they came with a really good compliment, and then they were like, "If I had to say something negative, it would be this." And it was like it was kind of things to help us improve. For yeah, our next it was summer. constructive. It was yeah. very constructive yeah, criticism, yeah. which we appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. You got to have that. You can't have people always saying everything you do is great because then you'll never really be ever. You'll, you'll never, never get, bigger, get better. Never yeah, get um, and so the. Uh, uh, that went off really well, and that was a great help to the coffers of addressing Gettysburg for sure. We were able to get some more equipment with that and uh, sock some away for future endeavors. And um, and then we got to planning other things. And what are those other things now? So let's see. What's today? November 17th. So we have uh, one of those things coming up in a couple of weeks. December what's 10th. that? We've Tell us about that, Cindy. Tell us. December 10th, we're doing a holiday social <laughs> ga- gathering for the addressing Gettysburg community that we pretty much booked the uh, tavern at Farnsworth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So from six to close on December 10th, we'll all get together and have a holiday meal and socialize and with some fun little activities involved. We're going to do a book exchange. We're going to br- everybody bring in a Civil War book. That's right. If you have uh, Civil War books uh, that you want to get rid of, get are, rid we do, are we exchanging or are we selling? Exchanging. 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 You're basically putting so, them out on a table so it, you know you bring in one that you've read already and you don't want anymore right. or you figure somebody else would love. Or if you have doubles. Yeah, or, doubles. Yeah, doubles. Of that and nature. Stuff. We'll bring in one book is fine, whatever, however you want to do and then you just take a book if you want one. Mm-hmm. There's one that's interests you and you've been waiting to find it or whatever. That's how we're going to do that. They're going to do an ugly sweater contest that Maria and Beth are pretty excited about doing. <laughs> okay. So we got to get the word out then that everybody needs to wear an ugly sweater. Ugly sweater, yeah. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. yeah. So so if you're coming, wear an ugly Christmas sweater if you want to be in this contest. What do they win? Um, We've got a $25 gift card for TRS Store. There you go. Then we've got, what else? I think there were like two other things. I think there was... Um, I forget now. Panera? No, it wasn't that Panera. I forget what it was. Well, something else. Yeah, so we got like yeah. a grand prize and a consolation yeah, prize. Grand prize right? and a consolation prize. And then I know that we're, Matt, you were talking about inviting some of the guides. That yes, yes. So uh, I haven't heard back in the affirmative or the negative yet, uh, d- in a definitive way. But uh, I have invited some of the guides, and I'll follow up with them. Um, and so you might uh, get to rub some elbows with uh, some of the guides, the guides. there. Yeah. I invited Bo, and he said he would come. And then, uh, and then we were talking in another conversation. And he was talking about how he has to go back to Texas for Christmas. And I said, "Oh, when are you going?" He goes, "The 10th. And I go, "Well, idiot, that's our, that's our uh, party that you just said you'd come to." And he's like, "Oh, I can't go." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't think he's going to be there unless I could twist his arm to stay another day. But anyway, um, w- so we've got that coming up in December. Uh, then moving on to January, uh, let's see here, January 28th. So I'm just going to go down the list of all the things that we've got that we're working on, and then we'll get into them a little bit more. A Night at the Museum on January 28th. Tickets are going to go on sale for that pretty soon, so uh, you know, keep your eyes and ears peeled. By the way, patrons are going to get them earlier. Uh, they're going to be able to get them earlier, I should say, and they're going to get them at a discount. So, what does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? That means if you want to get it early, become you want to make a patron, become a patron. You become a patron. It's that simple. It's, it's really it. that simple. It's really that simple. You know, that's how we uh, keep the uh, community. Well, that's how we keep everything going, frankly, is, you know, because I mean, Frank, let's put, let's be honest. If I can't do it, then we're not doing it. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. So it enables me to be able to do all these ideas that we come up with. Um, uh, let's see. Late March, we're going to do the uh, Adams County Historical Society sneak peek. I need to get with Andrew and, and iron out the details on that. But um, we're all looking forward to that one. You're going to get a sneak peek of the. Um, new museum that they have and we'll do a live show from there as well and I think that actually might be um, or I'm going to try to see if we can do a live broadcast of that as well right. with uh, the uh, well I won't say who yet because I haven't talked to them but um, in that way people staying at home who aren't able to come out we can maybe do a little little featurette video that just shows some of the stuff in the museum and we can play that for them there so that they at least know what we're talking about when we start to talk about the museum. And of course, we're going to talk about the museum. And um, I think I want to focus on the non-battle and even non-Gettysburg, 
well, not necessarily. What am I trying to say? The the non battle and uh, Adams County history, history. Uh, because there's a lot of other historical uh, events and uh, points of interest and items of interest that are going to be there. It's not just about the battle. There is a, certainly a battle portion of the museum, but there's so much more to Adams County than um, than you may think. And, and certainly more than the Battle of Gettysburg. And so uh, they're going to have a bunch of stuff in there. So we'll talk about that. It'll be great. We'll get together, have some food, see the beautiful new museum. It's really going to be nice. It's going to have awesome exhibits. And, uh, of course, you know, you get to hobnob with the, uh, the big celebrities of Gettysburg. Of course, Tim Smith uh, being one of them. Um, Do you really need anyone more than Tim? N- no, not really. No. Uh, let's see. June. We're going to do uh, the Civil War Institute conference again, uh, if they'll have us back. So far, they will have us back. Uh, Live at the Farnsworth House, we're going to do in September instead of August. And the reason for that was uh, we found that August... So our goal in August's show, on August 20th, was to sell 120 tickets. Yeah. Um, And we sold 92, Mm -hmm. um, which was still good. Actually, we sold 86. Seven or eighty-eight, and then we had some freebies that came in. Right, um, and so uh, uh, we we didn't reach our goal. It was still good for us financially, but the the goal would have been perfect for us if we had met that. And we thought, well, why? Why? Because it was a busy weekend in town, as far as I remember. We had 93 people on the tour. Mm-hmm. So it's not that there weren't people around, but um, we figured that maybe uh, some people might have been getting ready. They weren't coming into town because they were getting ready for back to school. Right. And maybe getting the last family vacation in, and it wasn't to Gettysburg, or they were just staying home, getting the kids ready for school. Some places, they're already back to school that Monday. So um, we figured, well, maybe if we do it in September, weather will be a little nicer, theoretically. A little less humid. A little less humid, because that was humid. Yes, it was. So a little less humid. You're already into the swing of things with school and all that stuff, hopefully. And uh, we're going to do it on a Saturday. So it's not like we're doing it on a Saturday, uh, Sunday night where you got to get up early on Monday. Uh, so we're going to do that again. Um, uh, let's see. Then this one here I'm not going to talk about until it's actually close to being ready. Um, this one I'll tease a little bit here. Uh, we're, we're going to start to uh, work with uh, 82 Cafe. Um, uh, for putting out a coffee line uh, because people, for years, people have been writing saying, uh, you should do your own coffee brand. And I was like, then why? (laughs) Who doesn't love coffee? Well, who doesn't love coffee? But I've since discovered that our listeners are huge fans of 82 Cafe. You two uh, in particular. You go there six to eight, literally six to eight times a day when you're down here, right? Yes, Yes, we do. I mean, first thing in the morning, and then it gets you through mid-morning, and then one at lunch, and then one for mid-afternoon, and then another one for pre-dinner, and then another one for after dinner. I don't know how you sleep. Very easily. Very easily. Very That's easy. amazing. With a guilty conscience. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wrong show. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, we I don't... We always check with the girls when we go in in the morning, because their, their hours change beginning of the summer to the full-fledged season, oh. and then end of the summer. So we always check and say, what time are you closing? Because we make sure we stop in right before they close to get our last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Usually on our way out to Saks Bridge to... Um, to look for ghosts. Yeah, well, you know. Not exactly look for ghosts. Laugh at the people looking for ghosts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that what is, I would that do. is our, by the way, 2023, we're going to put a field trip together at night to go to Saks Bridge to watch that spectacle. Well, yeah. So that's one of the things for our uh, get at. Well, let me finish this here. Uh, we're, I'm working on a 160th video documentary uh, to come out on the uh, battle anniversaries. One for each day. They're probably going to be, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 minutes long. They're not huge, long documentaries, but i um, got some uh, people helping me work on that. We're going to try to get most of it done over the winter and then start shooting, well, not start shooting, but continue shooting B-roll in the spring um, so that you can, uh, you know, so we can put in pictures of the, or video of the beautiful uh, landscape that we have here at Gettysburg. Um, and then uh, we're going to go down to Winchester to do and ask a guide there for the anniversary of Winchester. So 
we're doing more for the 160th. We're doing more um, anniversary episodes than we normally do that are going to come out on the, their respective anniversary. So Brandy Station is going to be the first one coming out on June 9th. Uh, we did that back in September. And then uh, we're going to record a Winchester one. Um somewhere outdoors down there. I don't know exactly where yet, but our, our buddy Casey will set us up with that down there. And uh, and that'll come out on June 15th. And I think that's about it uh, as far as non-Battle Days episodes go. But maybe we'll throw something else in. Who knows? God knows what can happen between now and then. So the Get Out of the Car Tour schedule, <clears throat> Bill... Yes. You you, you uh, talked about something that I think is very important, and, and that is that we decided for the first and the last tour of the year, um, people seem to be their most sociable mm-hmm. at those two. Um, April, it's obvious, right? You're coming out of the winter. You've got yes. cabin fever. You want to, and it's good to see people again because you haven't seen them all, se- all season. Um, and so what ends up happening is you get um, the group that's paying attention to Lewis, and then you get one or two splinter groups that kind of stay away from the regular group because they're having a big, long conversation. And there are some people who will remain nameless. um, Oh, my God. I love Bill (laughs) Escort. Who are a little loud. (laughs) And... And, uh, and, and and their voices travel, and uh, I, I consider it, uh, what's the word, rude. <laughs> and so I decided, uh, well, we all decided that to mitigate that, why don't we have a kickoff to the season the night before? And it's nothing special. We're going to meet somewhere on the battlefield and watch the sunset and hold hands together and catch fireflies. That's what we're going to do, right? Well, like the old days. Like, like in the, the old days. Olden days. Yeah. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the old days, you know, it was June. That's when the fireflies are out and you have to stay till after dark. And we're not allowed to do that anymore. So right now it's just going to be the sunset. And we will go um, to where are we going in April? Is the, the uh, peace, peace light. light. We're going to do the peace light. Because the first tour is Daniel's Brigade. Daniel's Brigade. So, so we're, we're going to go to the peace light. Together. Right. That's right. That's good. Uh, because I, I don't know where we're, where the starting point is on that yet, but um, probably the peace light. So it, it'll make sense to uh, to do it that way. Um, and then October is Garnet's Brigade. Garnet's Brigade. And so we're going to meet at the... Angle. Angle. That's right. And you know what? I'm going to give you guys a little teaser here. As far as we have it now, I'm not going to give you dates yet because there's some dates where we kind of need to like... Tweak. Tweak a little bit um, because there's some uh, uh, other things going on. But I'm going to just give you the month and the topic of the tour. Here we go. April is going to be Daniel's Brigade. Um, Willard's Brigade is going to be in May. The Florida Brigade is going to be in June. The Reconnaissance to Pitzer's Woods is going to be in August. We're taking July off again, ladies and gentlemen. Robinson's Division and the Defense of Oak Ridge is September. And Garnet's Brigade is going to be uh, October. A lot of Confederate stuff in there, if you notice. Let's see, that's one, two, three out of five. Am I right on that? Was that five that I just said, or is that six? I think that was six. Should be six? I think it's six. So, uh, okay, so about half. 50% of them are Union, 50% of them are Confederate. So I don't want to hear that we're too union centric. Yeah. We have a proud Virginian giving the putting together these tours and giving them. And so we have a nice mix here. Proud Virginian, but who fought for the United States of America. So Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So he's getting uh, both of them in there because uh that is uh, that is how that goes. Um yeah, so that I think will be good because then, be you know, good. we can get together, everybody can socialize. And the reason we do one in October, too, is because uh, there's people that only come out for October. Usually our biggest. Usually it's the, biggest. right. Well, you could say our. Um, but it is usually the biggest one that we have um, as far as turnout goes. And um, again, people have not been here for a year and they have not seen these people in a year and they want to start talking. So let's do the talking Friday night. So Friday night, we're going to have little meetups, nothing fancy, nothing special. You just show up and hang out and talk and maybe we'll get into snowball fights or something. We'll see what the weather's <laughs> like. Who knows? Uh, so that is that with hail in April. 
<laughs> well, you know, yeah, you well, do that's what we had ball. last time. Yeah, exactly. You never know what it's going to be. Um, the AG Guard is another oh, thing that AG we're working guard. on, and it's going to be a color guard. Now, Bill, this was your idea, or was this yours and Steve's? It was, it was an offshoot of you asking for people to hold the flag during the tours. Right. And between Steve, Ty, and myself, we said, oh, that'd be kind of cool if we could do that in the Memorial Day Parade. Yeah. Which then took off into full-fledged an actual color guard. That's the other thing I forgot to mention because I didn't have it on my list here, but the Memorial Day Parade. We're going to try to get into that um, for the simple reason of getting ourselves out there in the local community because I'm going to tell you something. We've been at this for uh, four years, and... um, you know, people are finding us more and more uh, in the community and stuff. But I think we need to do a better job of letting the businesses especially know that we one of the reasons I started this was to uh, promote the town and its businesses to our history loving audience. The people who listen to the show because they love history, they find the show. My goal, my hope is that people are going to uh, listen and really get um, get those juices flowing when, I'm oh, sorry, I have it on, I'm just going to leave it on all three cameras here, um, and, and really get those juices flowing, um, it, getting all excited about the, the history of Gettysburg and the battlefield, and, and make them want to visit if they haven't visited. And I can, I can confidently say that I know we've achieved that because I hear from people all the time saying, I haven't been there in 30 years, but then I found your show and now I'm planning my first trip back. And, um, and they give us the, the credit for that. So, okay, so we got you wanting to come back. Well, what do you do when you come back, especially if you've never been here or you haven't been here in 30 years? Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you go? Where do you eat? What do you, do you do? stay? Yeah, Exactly. I'll tell you now, if you're a business owner in this town, I'm aware of the ways that you have uh, to advertise yourself to the outside world. Um, Honestly, in my estimation, and I'm no expert on advertising, but just from my observations, having had a business here for since 2005, I have found that print advertising, it's expensive and it doesn't bring in a good ROI. Um, and, uh, why? Because print advertising, it, the people are already here and where do they plan their trip? They plan it on this little device here, their phone. And, um, by the time they get here, they already know what they're going to do. 15, 20 years ago or more coming to town and picking up a free magazine and leafing through it. Uh, finding an ad or something. Oh, honey, let's do this. You know, that made more sense back then, but that's not the way the world works today. The world works in your phone. That's it. Everything is in the person's phone. And so we reach people through their phones, through their computers, through whatever, wherever they are. And this is the way to advertise. And we purposely undercut all the print places because we know that we could bring you uh, better results. I mean, like you you talk uh, about, you know, 82, um, and, and, you know, like the part of the reason we approached them about becoming sponsors was because so many of our listeners already use it. Yep. Yeah, we would show up for get out of the car and then all of a sudden you turn around and there's everybody's got the same it's like a line of people yeah. that are going on the tour. Oh, yeah, hey. exactly. So, um, you know, the way I like to do it is like, you know, if somebody comes up to me and is like, I want to advertise on your show, but I don't particularly think they do a good business or, or something like that, or it's a, a, a whatever. I won't take it. I, I'm not that hungry for the money. I want quality. I want wow. value for the listener. Okay. And so when I hear from people, you should get 82 as a sponsor. I love 82. Well, that tells me, okay, this is a good fit because so many of the audience already likes it or for the historian for that matter, or the seminary. These are all places where I hear from people that they go to even uh, uh, Gettysburg museum of history. You know, every, every place that we have as a sponsor or people, people have recommended or I have patronized myself and said, I really love this. I want to promote it, but I got to also eat. So, you know, <laughs> here's, here, why don't you become an, an, uh, a sponsor? And then when they, when I tell them the price and they're like, really? And I go, yeah, I know I'm going to kick myself cause it's so low, but I want to really, I want businesses to know that this is the way to go. 
And, you know, um, now that we've hit a million downloads, I feel like, OK, you know, this is we're growing a good community. We're growing a good yeah. community. And um, and it's a very responsive community. I, we had Carolyn Ivanoff on yesterday for Patreon and she has a book coming out um, in, in the first quarter of the new year. And um, I said, well, we'll have to have you back on when the book comes out. And she said, oh, yeah, I'd love to come on. And uh, I told her, I said, you know, I've heard from a lot of our listeners when we have authors on, people will write to me and say, you know, I heard the interview with so-and-so, I went and got that book, wow, it was great, or I went and got that book, or, uh, you know, it was all right, you know, whatever. But um, I know that people listen to us, and they take our recommendation, and they go ahead and and buy the books. So, uh, yeah, I would say uh, start looking into the 21st century way of advertising things, because that might help you actually make it in the 21st century, and it will also help us grow, too. So we grow, that helps you grow, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what else? Anything else? That you got coming up? That we got coming up, yeah. It's, a, it's an action-packed year. It's an action-packed year. It is. We're, we're I'm, very I'm, busy. I'm talking. Save I'm, your vacation days, people. Yeah, I'm working on uh, another show out in Pittsburgh. Well, an actual show out in Pittsburgh. Um, I just have to talk with John Eric out there at uh, Captain Espy um, about you know when it would be and all that stuff. But uh, I would like to get another one of those out there. I liked going out there. I like meeting our listeners out there, and I hope we made some new listeners from the audience that came. But um, I think it's good because I know we do have a lot of listeners in that area because I can see the analytics. And so, you know, Pennsylvania, obviously Pennsylvania is the the most concentration of listeners uh, in the union, but then, or in the United States, I mean, but uh, the, uh, let's see, Ohio, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, and Virginia are in the top uh, 10 plus some others, I can't remember, but those are the, the higher ones. So the, all the people, all the states, I should say, that are within a four to eight hour drive of us are what am I trying to say? The highest concentration. Yeah. So, um, but that doesn't exclude anyone because we have Ken from Indiana. Oh yeah. I'm I'm just saying from Minnesota, you know, actually Karen, it's funny with Karen, like she's, we're, we're pretty good friends and she comes out to the tours, but she doesn't actually listen to the show. (laughs) She's a reader. She doesn't watch TV. She doesn't listen to things. But my point is, she's not a patron. She's no, no, she follows us on Instagram and and that's, that's it. Yeah. I always tease her because I tell her about something that happened and she's like, oh, really? I didn't know that. And I'm like, well, obviously you don't listen to the show. This was, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, but the point is taken though, Bill. Uh, we have people from all over the country, Colorado, um, let's yes, see. And uh, they come Arizona. To Arizona. They, uh, right. And they and come in. they need in. a place to stay and they need a place to eat. I they do need a place like to the, stay. One of the last tours that Ty was talking about somebody, it might have been Indiana, who like ordered stickers they, they like uh-huh. Thai stickers. Oh, yeah. And then they yeah. came to a tour. They, I think it might be got to meet Thai. Tour. They got to meet Thai. They were super Thai was excited. Really? They were, yeah. Yeah. They were super excited. excited to meet the, the yeah. Thai. That's good for him. Good yeah. for him, Thai. Good for you. You got more attention than me. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see. What else? Uh, yeah, so that's it. We got a lot of stuff that's uh, coming up in the new year. So uh, we hope you join. Again, being a patron isn't necessary, but you'll know about them ahead of time. Sometimes I actually consult the patrons when you know we were like kind of at an impasse like where should we go this way on this or should we go that yeah, way on we that will, we will I'll set up a survey a little survey, survey or a poll, or, a poll or, or I'll just ask a question and read the comments you know and um uh and that that's serves us well and I think it serves the community well because then you know everybody kind of has a, a little bit of a hand in things um, but yeah, so, you know, being a patron definitely helps us. I, I know you're sick of hearing it because you probably listen to two or three other podcasts and everybody has a Patreon account and everything like that, but none of them do the important work that we do. <laughs> no. We're, you know, we're building a community. I mean, that's honestly, that's it. Like, you know, I, I, there are, there are pod, I know there's a sports podcast out there that, you know, has a really good community and they actually like opened a restaurant, you know, like a sports bar, uh. which is an idea that we're working on too, not a sports bar, but you know, opening a place or, or a couple of different ideas for places and stuff. But you know, we just, we're not there yet. So, uh, yeah. but we're, we're getting, we're getting there. there. Well, small when, steps. yeah, take small steps when Bill, um, 
accidentally dies on the job, then we'll have enough money <laughs> to start one of these. Things. Anything for you, man. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. <laughs> I appreciate your sacrifice. Um, and uh, that's it. So, yeah. Now, the sad news of this past year, though, of course, uh, the most recent sad news is that uh, our great friend Eric, the producer Mahoney. Yes. I'm sorry, Mahoney. <laughs> no, no, no. Ba- Moni. Ba- Moni. I forget. Moni. I forget. How. Moni. Eric, the producer, has uh, left us for greener pastures. He's uh, moving back home. I won't say where so people don't stalk him. I mean, he's mentioned it on the show before, so you can go back and listen and get our numbers up. Um, <laughs> but he, uh, yeah, so he's no longer with us. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. It's not, he is not easy to replace. No. I wish he valued his uh, presence a little more than he does because uh, then he would realize what a handicap it is. Some big flip flops to fill. Very big flip flops to fill. Wow. Very, very big flattened flip flops. <laughs> Fred, <laughs> <to fill. laughs> Fred Flintstone feet. Fred Flintstone feet. But uh, no, but really, he, he is, uh, he is already missed and he's going to be missed as uh, things go on. Who are we going to report to about how many are going to the Farnsworth next year? Yeah, I know. Who's going to count? Oh, you, it's no, going to have to be. Flag. No, you've got the flag. Well, yeah, oh, rally got, around got, the flag. Yeah, and then, yeah. The and then Bill, oh, you we'll can just, be the counter. Can you count, Bill? No. Did you go to Catholic school? I did. Yeah, so you can't count. Um, well, we'll math. find somebody who went You're to public McClellan school. Math. <laughs> McClellan math. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's 350 <laughs> people coming back. I like back that. To, yeah. Let's do McClellan math. Yeah. Uh, 350 well, people come back to the Farnsworth. We'll always have record breaking numbers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, Eric. So, we, I, I really can't thank him enough. Uh, and I don't want to get sappy. Like, there's an AG Today show where I did my whole uh, little speech that I gave when we were on the tour. But uh, it really, Eric has been so vital to the growth of this whole thing. And he'll, he'll, Poo poo that, and he'll deny it. But it's absolutely true. You can take it from me. You can't. You can't believe him when it comes to valuing himself. But you can believe me. He he was a very valuable, very very valuable, very valuable person uh, to have along here. And um, we would not be where we are without his help for sure. Um, but. That does not mean we can't maintain without his help, and that does not mean we can't grow without his help either. Um, we're just going to do it in different ways. And uh, is the show going to change? No, because the show has really always been me and the guest and Eric piping in once in a while. So that that's not going to change much, right? Right. Uh, but, uh, the, you, you know, it's just going to be a different cast of characters. The thing with Eric is... He he will he it will require like two or three maybe more people to replace him. You know yes. he he did uh, a bunch of things um, uh, for me and a lot of them he did without me even knowing. Like uh, and he would just say, "Oh by the way, you're interviewing this guy." I'm like, "Great!" And that's what you want, right? You want like that's what a producer does. He produces. You know, he's somebody who's thinking ahead with you, but in a different direction. Right. You know, and so. Um, that, that aspect of Eric is going to be missed the most. I can train anybody to run the cameras. In fact, I have. And, um, and, but again, it it takes two or three people to do that because Eric was always, almost always, I don't think he was ever, uh, maybe once or twice unavailable to do a show. All the other times that we had a show to do, he was there running the camera. I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't have to instruct him on anything. He knew what to do. Uh, not only that, he vacuumed. He tidied up. Wow. And you know, I'm kind of a little disorganized. No. So yeah. So what? that's not, mm-hmm. wow. And so that was really nice. Um, but we were doing a show the other day. My friend Amy was running the cameras and she got up and she comes walking over here and she's like, okay, we need to do something about this. And she started tidying up the mess a little bit. And uh, this is about as tidy as it can get. I said, leave the Old Bay potato chip bag there. (laughs) But she moved the peanuts. Um, And so, you know, my point is Eric did a lot. Eric did a lot. He was like my mommy. And you know what? That's why when I heard when he asked me if he could help with the show. And I said, well, what are you, what's your work experience? What have you done? So that I could get a better idea of where he might fit in Mm -hmm. here. And he told me his work experience. But when he mentioned that he was a sergeant in the army, I was like, okay, you're my producer. Because, you know, sergeant's like your mom, right? And your dad. I don't know. 
Well, this is what they tell me. Yeah, allegedly. And, and this is the way Eric Eric be, behaved. He he yes. he knew what the group needed, and he would think of these things, and he would do them, and everything. Very very big loss. But I'm happy for Eric and Katie because they're moving on to something that I think will be better for them. They'll be happier um, uh, where they're going and what they're going to be doing. And so I wish them all the best. And um, if you ever, uh, well, you can find, you can contact Eric if you ever uh, want to find out where he is and then come up and see him and say hi. But I'm sure he won't want to see you. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we'll see him a few times a year when they come down for, for whatever reason. Uh, so that was the sad news. But uh, the good news is, I mean, everything was up this year. I mean, all the numbers are up. We, as of now, I think we have 347 patrons. Um, that number always fluctuates, but it usually goes within 10 of, you know, whatever. So uh, December might be more, might be less, probably less. We made it over 300. Made it over 300. And I did hit 350 at one point, but I lost three. Um, and uh, let's see, what else there? Well, yeah, the uh, the YouTube numbers are up. The uh, AG Today Show's numbers are up. That's getting more traction. Um, we had Steve Sims on, which was a pretty oh, yes. big get. That was a that was huge get. Yeah, and uh, I heard a lot of good stuff about that. And uh, what else? Let's see. Who else did we have this year? We had a lot of people this year. A lot of people this year. A lot of shows was coming it up. this year that we were introduced to Ralph Siegel? I believe Ralph did his first Sh show this year. Uh, was it this what year or at the end of last year? It might have been the end of last year. More Ralph, more Gooder. Yeah, everybody loves Ralph. Ralph, uh, Ralph is a favorite. I mean, I, really, I hear nothing bad, honestly. No, not one negative comment about any of the guests that we have on here. And we're very lucky that you know yes, we find guests that know how to talk in front of a microphone. Not everybody knows how to talk in front of. We were talking about this when we walked past that bus, and the, the woman was holding the microphone five feet in front of her, straight up to the ceiling. And I walked by, and I go. You know, it really pisses me off when I see people holding a microphone and talking into it, and they don't know how to freaking hold a microphone. And yes, talk people into become it. a patron, and you can hear Matt just just freak bitching, out walking bitching. down the streets of Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah, it's like, look at that idiot! You don't know how to use a microphone. You're a microphone. Yeah, exactly. That's what they say back because they, they're so blindsided by such a critique. But anyway, uh, we we did have uh, it was a banner year. It was a very good year. Excellent guests. When I was forty four. It was a very good year. We had uh, a lot of good guests. Oh. Patrick and Bo. Uh, yeah, that was early on in the year. Patrick I keep forgetting. That feels like last year. But that, feels, was, that was February. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was just the beginning of this year. Of this year. Patrick Barry, and Bo. That was our, Delman. So we had, we had our, our first and our second live event. Uh, recording or in-person shows, I should start calling them, because we do live shows on YouTube every week. So in-person shows um, in February, and it went off better than I expected, and uh, people liked it, and we did another one, and people liked that one, and we had a lot of fun, so that's good. That's going to keep on going. I don't know. It was a great year. It was a great year, so I have really nobody to thank uh, except for the committee and the listeners who participate in all this stuff. Of course, the patrons, top of the list, top of the list are the patrons, especially the ones who've been with us for years and just keep on going. Like that, I mean, you know, You're there welcome. was there was a certain point in my life where my own parents cut me <laughs> off, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "All right, you're almost fifty. You need to find a job," you know. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> you're almost forty. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you're nowhere near fifty yet. No, no. Well, I'm near it. Yeah, I'm near it. <laughs> Nearer than I'd like to be. Well, the uh, other options not very good. Correct, and I'd rather be nearer to fifty than dead. There you go. Uh-huh. Do you know that on the night I turned 50 in town, someone said to me, you are now closer to 100 than you are to zero. Because right after midnight when I turned 50... Wait, this is, this is again, Catholic school math. Yeah. That whole Aren't you just halfway there? Well, no, at one oh, minute past cause midnight... Because it's, it's right, because you're working towards your 51st year. Yeah. Yeah. So, you'll be all right. Yeah, well, look, it happens to the best of us. Well, it happens to the rest of us. It happens to everybody. We all get old, and we all, believe it or not, are going to die. I can't believe I'm going to die. Oh, I can. Well, I can believe you're going to die, but no, no, I can't no, believe... I mean, I, oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, I love living. Life is so... I love it. 
how do you not love life, right? Well, I could see why people couldn't love life. There's some pretty shitty lives out there. But my point is... Your life is uh, what you make it. What? Your, Your life, life is what you make it. And, well, there's some people... Yes, but for the most part, it's what you make it. And, uh, I, yeah, even when, I, even when my life was terrible, Cindy, yeah. I still loved it. I was grateful for it. I just couldn't figure out why I couldn't make it work. Um, anyway. Doing it now, you are doing it now. But much yeah, like we'll the see. podcast you put in... The more you put in, the more you'll get out. Come to the Get Out of the Car Tours. Come to the live shows. Participate on Day G Today shows. Yeah, call, call in. Call in. Call yes. in. God, please call please in. Call in so it's not only Bill. And oh, my God. Cam I love and, Bill Escort. Yeah, right, right. Well, now I have, uh, and this is nothing against Cameron, but I have put a moratorium on Cam being on the show until after the new year. And the reason for that is simply this. Cameron coming on the show makes me lazy. I don't, I don't. I just, you know, if, if I get to Thursday and I'm like, I'm just, I have no idea what to do this week on, on Friday show, I'll text Cam. I'll be like, you coming tomorrow? Goes, yeah, I'll be there. And I'm like, okay. So I'll just wait for him to show up and then it'll just be a, a you know, a shit show. <laughs> but uh, too much of a good thing week, <laughs> week after week after week is not a good thing after a while. And so I don't want to tire the audience. I'm sure they've already been tired out by uh, Cameron, <laughs> but I don't want to tire the audience uh, on that. Uh, so uh, Cameron is he's welcome to come and sit in, but I'm not going to uh, you know interview him like I do all the time because I, I, I it, it, it really it just makes me lazy. Like I just don't work on. Well, there's only so much show. country goodness you can take. Honestly. I am fascinated by the kid. I, I can. I, I 100% agree. Yeah, yeah, but not everybody is. True. Right. And but. and not only that, but it, it, it makes me lazy. That's the bottom line. Can't get you lazy going into the winter. Hell no. Because no. I'm already you, naturally lazy. Gotta gotta going you, yeah. Yeah. That's keep, right. That's right. We need right. content. No, you'll get content. We got we got stuff going on. My plan is to so here's what you got uh, coming up, ladies and gentlemen, for content. Um, so the last AG today we're going to do is I think I think it was December 9th that I said because uh, let's see here, uh, yeah, December 9th is a Friday. That'll be the last one. That'll be our Christmas party show. Uh, we'll just have stupid decorations. That's really the only thing that's going to make it Christmassy. I'm sure it's going to be crazy here because of the amount of people coming in for. The holiday party. Oh, Saturday. that's right. We, oh, that's I didn't even think of that. We have our holiday party the next day. So we'll have everybody in. We'll do a little holiday party. And it will be kind of just really to serve the purpose of rubbing it in the faces of those who don't actually uh, come <laughs> to the holiday party. Uh, because by then it'll be too late. Um, and then after that, we're taking the rest of December off from AG today. So that's three weeks where you won't have us on a Friday, but you can certainly go back and listen to all the archive shows. They are available for free, by the way, the audio version with no commercials on Patreon. So you can go over to Patreon and listen to those for free. You don't have to be a patron to do it. But maybe while you're there, you'll be like, well, I've made it this far, so I might as well just start an account and become a right, patron. It's easy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very user friendly. Exactly. Um, also, the last Ask a Guide, I think, is going to come out on the 16th or, or in December. And then there will be a couple of weeks where there will be no upload simply because I have uh, shows in the can, but not a ton of them yet. So I need to uh, conserve for the, the 2023 season. When 2023, 23 starts, so too do the winter lectures. And so we will be putting the audio up for those every week. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it'd be nice if there were visuals. Well, the Park Service does a video. So for us wow. to do a video would be redundant. Yeah, they do a live stream of it too. So for us to do a video would be redundant. I'll be honest with you, the um, putting up the audio of the winter lectures does two things for me gives me a break from having to produce and put out a show. But it also, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but when I breathe in, it sounds like I'm so stuffed. I'm so sorry about that, folks. That's so annoying listening to that stuff. I hate that. I'm sorry I'm doing it to you. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, the, uh, so yeah, so I don't have to worry about keeping up with the schedule of releasing Ask a Guides. Um, and also, and so it gives me a little bit of a breather. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is that it keeps the feed alive because um, as as many people who might do a podcast learn uh, the hard way, when you have a month where you don't put something out and then you don't put something out the next month and the next month and the next month, you hurt yourself. You're, you're, obviously, your listens are going to go down because there's nothing new coming out. 
but also you might actually lose people because after a while, if they don't hear from you and they think that you've quit, they'll, they'll unsubscribe to your show. So you got to keep going. Um, and so that's the other thing there. And, but in the meantime, I'm not just going to be going to the lectures. I'm going to be working on the uh, script for the narrative episode for July 3rd. I'm going to be working on the 160th video documentary. And I'm going to be... Uh, well, you'll be doing the Tim Smith Sunday night. Uh, we're going to do those okay, as well. Yeah, Because yeah. those are great. Yes. And by uh, the way, do those in person. Oh, yeah. Go, go in person. Yeah, go yeah. in person. Yeah, no, that's a lot a, of fun. A, it is very yeah. fun. Um, and then uh, what was the other thing now? Uh, I'm going to record a bunch of Ask a Guides and Patreon episodes because I, I, I did some thinking and I was like, you know what? I got to really record a shit ton of stuff in the winter. Why? Why do I need to do that in the winter? Because everybody has time, number one. Number two... Nobody has time in the summer. And so if I'm going hand to mouth with episodes, I get into trouble when summer comes because no one's available. And then I start sweating. Am I going to be able to release a new episode next Monday when I need to? Right. So uh, I said, well, doing the winter lectures will help me keep the feed going. And then I can just record a bunch of stuff to hold on to and then start releasing when the lectures are over and the springtime starts. Yes. So that's the idea for that. Plus, Taking AG Today out of the equation, we have four new Patreon shows that we have to do each month and two new Ask a Guides. So that's six shows. And uh, then when you throw AG Today in, that's four more shows. So six plus four is what? Ten. Ten. 312. Th that's what I was thinking, but Cindy B. McClellan, man. There. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so. Oh, I, my God. I love Bill Escort. So I have uh, I have to come up with all of those shows. And that's a hard thing to do without a break in releases. So I need to build up a, a stockpile. Um, so I hope you'll stick with us through all that time because uh, things are going to get good afterwards. I got some good stuff in the can for you now um, and uh, all that other stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's it. So that's about all that's wrapping up 2022 and teasing 2023 a little bit there. Uh, anything I, I, I've forgotten here that you want to add? No. No, no I yeah. think we're, we're rolling on in. We're rolling on into 2023. Big year, 160th anniversary. I have, uh, I have also uh, put out a call for this before. We've got a few responses, but I'll remind everybody. We would like for our live shows, especially the outdoor show, um, uh, maybe an opening act, someone to warm up the crowd so I don't have to do it because it's kind of silly to have the guy who's hosting the show warm up the crowd. Um, so I don't know if you're a comedian Okay, give that a try. Um, if you're a band or a musician, you have a musical act, let us know. You come in, play a little music. Doesn't have to be Civil War. Could be Civil War. Wouldn't hurt to be Civil War. As long as it's good, as long as you do a good job, uh, you come in and uh, do that. Let us know. Just send something to Matt at addressinggettysburg.com, some kind of a demo or something like that. And then also, yeah, if you want to get involved in the show, if you have an idea for a show for our network, we're putting that together. We're starting to put that together. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, plenty of things to do that we want to do. And if you are one of these people who likes to get involved and help out with things, please drop us a line and let us know what you're thinking. Maybe it's something we never even thought of. So don't think that, well, well if you have a unique talent for the help, please include that in the email. What do you mean? Production. <clears throat> video oh editing. yeah. Yeah. Or sales scheduling scheduling. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, whatever. And, yeah. Right. mechanic, anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, whatever it is. Um, <coughs> We're very inclusive. <laughs> oh, Eric thought that was funny. Uh, he does love me. Yeah, he does. And and just for everybody here, um, you know, who misses Eric along with us, uh, let's listen to Eric speak the language of love before we go. And um, well, well, no, after we say goodbye. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your support. Thank you for listening. Uh, look forward to more. Look forward to meeting new people next year. Look forward to seeing old friends again next year. Have a safe and warm winter as much as you possibly can. And that's it. Thank you. Good night. And now here's Eric with the language of love. Un gato grande in mis pantalones. <laughs> 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 Big cat in his pants. <laughs> <laughs>